Good morning, everyone. Last week, our dear members, the net's husband, the jaw, passed away. So I don't. I prepared this Dharma talk for Joe, as well as all mature practitioners, uh, so that we can think about the grave matter of uh, life and death. If uh, there's uh, some awakening in our mind through this uh, sermon, then lots of merits go to the Joe for his. Uh, attaining complete uh, liberation. Buddhist uh, priest, uh, Bhamnyun is a very well-known and respected uh, monk in Korea. When he was in high school, from time to time after school, he went to the nearby uh, monastery to offer prayer and meditate. Uh, in order to calm down his mind. The abbot of the temple, Domun, is uh, well known for his uh, loving for long conversation. One day, after he went to, his, uh, to that monastery, when he left the Buddha hall, he happened to encounter the abbot. Uh, and the monk Domun asked him, why don't you have, a, don't we have a cup of tea? He was uh, really afraid that their conversation can become very long. So he said, I have to go to the library because uh, I'm taking examination tomorrow. And the monk uh, Domun asked uh, to that uh, high school student, uh, he said, uh, you are very busy because you have to prepare for the exam. So before you come to the library, where did you go? Where have you been? That monk Bomnyan said, before going to the before going to the library, I go to the I went to my home. So he asked, before you're going home, where have you been? So before I went to the high school, I went to the middle school and the elementary school and the kindergarten. Before that, where you have been? And he replied, I've been probably in my mother's room. And the uh, abbot asked, before that, do you know where you have come from? The Bumyan said, I have no idea. So you also said, uh, you are very busy going to the library. After going to the library, where do you plan to go? And monk Bumyan replied, after the library, tomorrow I have to go to school. After school, where? Probably I have to go to the regular college and having some job. After that, the abbot persistently asked, probably I will get married and will retire. And eventually, I will die after death. Where do you think you are going? That high school student replied, I have no idea. All of a sudden, the abbot shouted, you said uh, you're very busy, but you have no idea where you have come from and where you are going after death. Why did you say you are busy? Busy with the what? Busy for what? I'm not sure that Abbott said that in a serious way. But when the Abbott said 
to that high school student deeply implanted in his mind and heart. So when he came back from that temple, he thought about the, where have I come from? Where am I going after people die? Buddhist master, Nahong is uh, one of the greatest uh, Buddhist priest in Korea. He lost his mother when he was in his uh, teens. And he asked around all the elders in the village, where did my mother go? But any answer was a satisfactory. This motivated him to search for the truth. Our founding master said, uh, the person who does not know where he has come from or where he's going, like the tadpole. At that time, he gave that sermon in Byonsan, Hermitage, during the summertime. After shower, lots of a pond was created inside the, uh, at the, in front of the temple. So lots of a tadpole just start to be born and they play around wiggling their tails. So looking at that tadpoles, those persons are like those tadpoles uh, who's uh, playing very joyfully, but they don't know. The water will eventually dry and that they will die in some time. Our founding master said, ordinary people consider only their lives in the present to be important, but Percepted people recognize that how to die is important as well. This is simply because they know that only a person who dies well can have a good rebirth and a good life in the next. And only a person who has a good birth and a life in the present death can have a good death. Also because they know the principle that life is the root of a death, and the death is the root of a life. Therefore, even though there is no specific time for this, if a person is past 40, one must start packing one's bag for one's upcoming death, so that one will not have to rush as one is dying. In this world, many people work very hard. But what if it's just like rowing the boat of our life very hard? But what if the direction of the boat that we are rowing is going to the wrong direction? There are so many people where well, they were successful or not that successful, regret on their deathbed. Several years ago at uh, KBS, a Korean, some broadcasting station, there was a documentary called The Death. Death. It became very, very popular. At first, the producer was somewhat suspicious. The title death may not be that appealing, but it attracted lots of people's interest. Lots of comments or conclusion was, if people think about death, knows death, then one can live their lives in a very, very different way. They could enjoy each and every moment of their life. Each and every moment can be very divine if they understand the principle of life and death. Our founding master said, 
the most urgent thing in our life is to, to believe in or realize the truth of uh, neither arising nor ceasing, which means uh, the truth of uh, eternal life and the karmic principle of uh, cause and effect. Knowing these two truths is uh, the most urgent thing, far more urgent than encouraging others to do lots of uh, meritorious uh, things. Preparing for eternal life is uh, preparing ourselves in this present moment. Except this present moment, uh, there is no eternal life. Past, present, future, that's our conceptual fabrication. So in our daily life, uh, how can we prepare the eternal life? First of all, we have to realize death is not the end. There are countless lives unfolding before us. Our founding master said, a human being's birth and death is like opening and closing your eyes, inhaling and exhaling, or falling asleep and waking up. There might be difference in how long this takes, but the principle is the same. Birth and death are originally non-dual. Arising and ceasing originally do not exist. The enlightened understanding as a transformation, but the unenlightened call it birth and death. Specifically, what are we supposed to prepare? For example, uh, next uh, year, if you plan to go somewhere when you have a vacation, if you go to Niagara Falls, you have to prepare month, so one or two days. But if you plan to go to Nepal or India, you have to prepare at least uh, one week. In order to prepare, the eternal life, the grave matter of life and death, Buddha said several things that we need to prepare when we are alive. So, the first thing is, uh, in our daily life, uh, we need to train ourselves to sever, drop our unwholesome attachment and uh, keep a pure mind. When our founding master was uh, alive, uh, when they hold the meditation retreat, uh, it's uh, usually one month or three months. One day, one noble lady joined uh, the winter retreat. Several days later, she asked, to our founding master, I need something to tell. And she said uh, she cannot concentrate all these uh, retreat programs because uh, she's very worried about her household affairs. She asked her daughter-in-law, you should be in charge of the cooking, cleaning, and all kinds of chores. But she's very doubtful. She's very anxious whether her daughter-in-law can take care of that job well. So she packed her things in the room and left the headquarters. Our founding master, when our founding master saw her leaving, the headquarter compound, he said uh, to his student, that is the rope of uh, attachment that can draw people into hell. So think about that. What kind of uh, attachment uh, we have? Do you know why we 
have a lot of wandering thoughts when you practice meditation. There may be many reasons, but fundamentally speaking, because we have a lot of unwholesome desire and attachment that's embedded in our mind and heart. That is the root. From that root comes out so many wandering thoughts and the worries and the anxiety. So in order to become a very good meditator, the, the first job is to let go of lots of attachment that shakes our mind. Thich Nhat Hanh said, uh, it may take time and it takes courage to let go of lots of attachment. But as soon as uh, when we let go of that, the happiness, freedom of mind comes uh, immediately. One of the minister, uh, when she had a sabbatical year, around 10 years ago, she went to India and stayed in some convent run by the Mother Teresa when she was alive. Her English was very low, so in the convent, her job was to bring homeless people. Many of the homeless people that stay at the train station is not mentally stable to bring those people to their convent. And one day, she brought uh, one older man sleeping in the train station and bring that to her convent. And uh, her job was also to help them to take a shower and uh, provide uh, the good meal. Before that old man, entered the shower room, they needed to take off the clothes in the locker room, leaving their bags, etc. But that old man insisted to have his bag inside the shower room. And she kind of enforced him to leave that bag. And she just thought, Probably there is some stolen stuff. He stole something in the station, and it might be in the bag. But when she opened the bag, do you know what she discovered? It's uh, the plastic bottles the people discard, and lots of uh, dirty plastic bags. The guy is not that mentally stable person. But she told me that uh, when she saw all those uh, plastic bags and the dirty glass or plastic bottles, it's uh, exactly like uh, she is uh, singing, seeing her own mind and heart. It worked just like a mirror. She thought about uh, just like that old person is attached to that completely worthless things, how many things am I really attached to? So she said uh, it was a pretty important moment for her to become motivated to walk on the Dharma path. You know what? If we let go of a lot of things, uh, then the universe, the Dharma Kaya Buddha, will far better take care of our things. We need uh, some faith or trust in our true self and the Dharma Kaya Buddha. And the many things uh, that we are really attached to is not really worthwhile to be attached considering the eternal life. This is uh, something we need uh, to practice uh, in our daily life. The second thing that we need uh, to prepare is uh, 
the Dharma power, power of the mind. Why we cannot let go of some negative thought or some negative emotions? Why it is hard to forgive others? Or let go of some comparing mind, jealousy, whatever things. There may be many reasons. Probably our determination is weak. But the primary reason is why we cannot carry out what we resolve to do is because our mind is very weakened. It's not that empowered. Just like if things are very heavy, let's say this podium is very heavy, it is very hard to lift up when our muscle is very weak. Because of the weakened mind, we cannot actualize what we promised ourselves to do, what we think is right. How can Empowering our mind is making our mind stable and focused in many trying situations and brightening our mind, enhancing our wisdom and enhancing the power of the mind, especially in the choice in action. We usually call that threefold practice. We just chanted, uh, we practice a sitting meditation and the chant a purification mantra, or at home we study scripture, or we observe the precepts, etc. It is uh, all the ways, all the subject to empower our mind. That's why one Buddhist master said, uh, cultivation of the mind for three days lasts for a thousand years. But the material things that we amassed for a hundred years become a dust in one day. The third thing, to prepare for eternal life, is establishing a great vow. In Buddhism, vow or Aspiration means our life goal. This is something what we really, really want. Buddha said, one and the only way we can be free from all suffering and distress is to realize who we really are, where we have come from and where we are going. It's called enlightenment or awake. So the Buddhist vow for all practitioners is attaining great enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. If, uh, if you decide your mind tomorrow, despite COVID situation, I have to drive to Washington, D.C. If you are really, really determined, whatever happens in your family, then you will live pretty early. So when our life goal, life orientation is very clear and strong, then we will not be wavering or disturbed by lots of secular things. Apart from practicing how much time you spend on the meditation cushion, you will be very centered and unmoving. Many parents uh, told me that one moment is uh, the happiest when they raise their children. Many of them say that when they saw their baby stand up, 
and to take the first step. That's the happiest moment when they raise their child. When we establish a great vow, attaining great enlightenment, it may take a lot of time, but the universe will be really, really happy. And all the Buddhas and the Bodhisattva will support us and guide us to the best path. Our second head Dharma Master said, a babe fry live just for one day and it planned his, its life just for one day. Locust, a grasshopper lives for one season. So its life plan is just for one season. Regular person plan for one life, but the practitioner should plan for eternal life. So they say life is a short, but the art is long, but we practitioners need to seek after something eternal and everlasting. So this is uh, the path to prepare for our eternal life, and this is the path to live very happy at this uh, present moment freely. Thank you.